Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. This is how you tweet me, this is where I live, and this is what we're talking about today. Synthesizing rows with Oracle. So, synthesizing rows. Why? I mean, after all, you've got an Oracle database, surely you have all the data you need in there already, right? Well, maybe not. And the reason it might not be is because databases actually are sparse, but people using databases don't like sparse data. Let's look at a common example. When you display your office calendar on screen, does it look like this? Does it have all the days of the month? Or does it just look like this, where we only have the two days of the month that have meetings on it, the 9th and the 25th of June? I would probably suggest that it probably looks like this in almost every client you can think of. This is because people like to see context around their data. In this, in this case, they want to see all the days in June. The problem is, when we look at the underlying database table, it's not going to store rows for meetings that don't exist. It only stores rows for the two meetings. What we want is an SQL that will show all 30 days for June, even though we've only got two rows in the database table. Hence, we need to synthesize rows. Now, that's easy in code. Just about every language looks the same when we want to generate numbers at, you know, ad hoc. We just have some sort of looping construct that lets us go round and round and we're good to go. But we don't want to do it in code. We want to do it in SQL. And to see how we can do that, we'll take a little bit of a walk back down memory lane to see how people have tackled this issue in the year, over the years. Back in 2001, I was at a seminar in the United Kingdom and Jonathan Lewis showed the following potential solution for generating an arbitrary number of rows. First, we create a table called row source, and you can see that it's only got 23 rows. So that doesn't make it much use for synthesizing, synthesizing rows, but then we construct the following SQL on that table. You can see that it's using the Oracle hierarchy syntax. I'll be doing a complete coverage of that in another video soon, so stay tuned. The hierarchy syntax is typically used when you want to traverse a recursive relationship in a database table. A common example is that of employees in a company. Employees report to managers who are themselves employees, who report to more managers and so forth, all the way up to the CEO. Jonathan's query took advantage of that and effectively turned the hierarchy into a recursive relationship by going back on itself. It would simply spin around and around. And this is what we get as a result. Our query returns just over 4 million rows, all coming from a table with only 23 rows. There's a simple power of two relationship going on here. The number of rows in the table maps directly to the number of rows that we get back. So if you need more rows, you simply put more in there. So we've got 4 million rows now that we can get anytime, anywhere we want it. First, I'll create a view around our query called Row Generator to make it easy to use. And now let's go back to the calendar and see how that can be used. First of all, we don't want numbers, we want dates. So we can use a little bit of magic to turn our numbers into dates. And now we just incorporate that into a join in our meetings table and we're done. And there's our 30 rows of meeting data. But can we do better? Well, yes, we can. On the Ask Tom site, the same approach was taken to the next level. We don't need a 23 row table. Right? We can just use the dual table, which is present in every database, and we're done. We can even get a more succinct syntax by querying directly using the level clause within our SQL statement. So now, not only have we removed the need for this additional table, dual is actually very cool for another reason, and that is performance. If we turn on auto trace and run our row synthesizer, we can see a reference to an object called fast dual. Even though dual is a legitimate table in its own right, the database also knows that dual is special. That is, it only ever contains one row. So it doesn't even need to visit the real dual table. It can simply create a result row out of memory and send it straight back to us. That makes it faster and reduces contention. So how fast is it? Well, the laptop I'm using here, I'm getting around about 2.5 million rows per second. That's pretty cool. That's like synthesizing rows almost for free. That's awesome. Now, a couple of things that we need to note. Some of the older versions of SQL Plus were actually too smart for their own good. They would see your query, see that it referenced the dual table and think, well, dual only returns one row and just return the run row even though your query would want more than that. Now, if you had that, for starters, you should be upgrading, but in the interim, what you can do is use the with clause to avoid the issue. And yes, stay tuned, we'll do a complete treatment of the with clause in a future video. The second thing you need to be careful of is memory consumption in your program global area. Don't forget that this is still a hierarchy query. 
the Oracle kernel doesn't know that you are just using it for generating rows. It still expects that you might want to climb back up that hierarchy tree so it's remembering stuff along the way. So if you push two things too far, you might get some problems. Here's an example of my dual query getting 1 million rows, and that's fine. So now I get all excited and push it out to 10 million rows, and look what happens. I actually ran out of memory in my session. But this is easily solved. If you need 10 million rows, then I can just synthesize 10,000 rows and 1,000 rows and join them together. In this way, I can generate any number of rows that I'll ever need. And then it's really just about using your imagination. If you can generate rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, they could just as easily be indices into an array or into a string or whatever you like. For example, we've probably all tried this at some point in the past. We have a list of items in a string and we want to use that list within an in expression in our SQL. And of course it doesn't work. Oracle doesn't know it's a list, it just thinks it's a single string with some commas in it. But by using our row synthesizing techniques, we can walk along the string using the substring function and convert that string into a set of rows as we've done in the example you can see here. Once that list is a set of rows, we can use it in a subquery or a join to solve our original problem. So there you have it. Synthesizing rows in Oracle, it's easy and it's super fast. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.